Emma and I'm Tracy and we're from Curly Seams. I thought we'd have a go at a beginner's one patch quilt. <gasps> oh I love a one patch quilt. Don't we all? <laughs> <laughs> so a one patch quilt if nobody knows is just a one patch. You make a quilt from just one shape and today it's going to be square. Yes I love a square. To make this project you're going to need 42 5 inch squares of fabric half a metre of 42 inch wide fabric for the borders of the quilt, one metre of fabric for the backing of the quilt, this is 42 inches wide as well, and one quarter metre of 42 inch wide fabric for your binding. You're also going to need some wadding, and you can choose whichever type of wadding you like, and you're going to need about a metre of wadding. The tools that you're going to need for your project are a cutting mat, a rotary cutter with a ruler. You're also going to need some scissors, some good quality cotton sewing thread and some pins. Towards the end of your project, a product such as 505 temporary adhesive spray may come in handy as well. Charm packs are ideal for your first quilt because they are pre-cut five inch squares arranged into a pack so there's no cutting and they all go together nice and neatly. So we've shown you a charm pack that you could use for your project but you don't have to use one of those. You could also use fat quarters or you can buy meters of fabric from your local quilt shop to do this as well. So lay it out on your board and you're going to fold your fabric so that your salvage edges meet the fold of your fabric. Smooth it all out so it's laying nice and flat along the board and you're going to take your ruler and place it down along this right hand side. Using a line on the ruler along the folded edge just down the bottom here, you're going to place it on the fabric and you're going to try and trim off as little as you possibly can to neaten that edge. Place your hand down on the ruler to maintain pressure on it Release your rotary cutter and then push away from yourself along the edge of the ruler. Walk your hand up the ruler to maintain that pressure and finish the cut right the way along the edge of the fabric. Make sure that you cover your blade once you're finished. You can then move that scrap piece of fabric out of the way and if you have room you can move your board around so that you are cutting from the other side. If you don't have room, then move your fabric, but it is better to leave it in place now that you've cut it. Now that you have this nice neat edge, you can place the ruler down on the fabric and line up on the five inch mark along here, and you can then begin to make your five inch cuts. and there is a five inch strip ready to go. Once you've got your five inch strips cut, you can then open it out. Use your ruler again to trim off the edge. Like so. And then again, if you have the room to move your board to do so, or just very carefully move your fabric round into position and then you can start cutting your five inch squares from your strip. Continue to cut your squares from your yardage until you have 42 squares, or if you've got your charm pack, then you're ready to go. Once you've got your 42 squares ready to go, you need to arrange them into an order that you're happy with. This is a design wall, which is just a flannel sheet stuck up on a, a piece of card, which means that you can step back from it and, and have a good look at it. If you haven't got one of these, don't worry about it, just do it on the carpet in front of you. You're going to arrange your squares into six rows with seven squares in each row. And once you've got them all laid out, 
that's your opportunity then to have a little play, have a mix up, decide what you're happy with and decide what's going to go where. Once you've got a layout that looks great and you think it's good to go, perhaps consider taking a photograph of it before you go any further, just so that you can remember where everything goes. We're now going to piece these together and we're going to work in rows. So we're going to start with this top row and join all of these together, then the next row and so on until we've got seven completed rows. Right, so I'm going to start stitching the quilt together now. So I'm sat at the machine, I've got my machine all set up, I've got my thread loaded on the top and my bobbin's full. So do check that you've got a full bobbin before you've started. So I'm going to show you a couple of things that might be useful to you when you start the stitching process. In patchwork we use a quarter inch seam allowance which is a little bit different if you've ever sewn a garment before you'd sew with a five eighth seam allowance but in patchwork we use a quarter inch and so it's a lot smaller and we need to learn to try and keep that quarter inch seam as accurate as possible. So a couple of things that you can do. Most of the sewing machines come with a little seam allowance guide it's like a a little angled um, bracket and a screw and you can screw those to the bed of your sewing machine and you can position that at a quarter inch so that you keep a nice consistent seam allowance. If you haven't got one of those I'll give you a little tip, nice little tip just to keep you going. Um, this is a piece of sticky back felt, it's the stuff that you use on the bottom of your chairs if you cut yourself a strip of that, you can stick it to the bed of your sewing machine at a quarter inch away from the needle. So that's another way you can help keep that quarter inch seam consistent. Now, having said all of that, because we're sewing um, squares together, the quarter inch seam isn't as important because as long as you keep the same seam allowance all the way through, everything is going to come together really nicely. But try and get the quarter inch because it will be necessary when you go on to other types of quilts that include things like triangles. Okay, so let's get stitching. I'm going to take the first two pieces from the top row and I'm going to position these so that they have right sides facing. So I've, I'm going to match up the top and the bottom of the, the square. I'm going to make sure that everything comes together. So the top matches and the bottom matches and the seam all the way down the side is the same. And then we're going to put that under the machine, a line up at the quarter inch mark and then we're going to stitch. I'm going to stitch with a stitch length of anywhere between 2.2 and 2.5 millimetres, depends on what kind of machine you've got. My machine here I've got a mechanical adjuster so I can change the length quite easily but some machines just have a standard 2, 2.5 other machines can go somewhere in between that range. So whatever you can do, 2.2, 2.5, just go with that stitch length. And then we're going to stitch our quarter inch seam. My machine's quite fast, it's also quite noisy. So I've got those two um, seams stitched, uh, two pieces of fabric stitched, and I've got the quarter inch and I'm going to give that a press before I move on to the next patch. So. There's my first two, but let's give that a press before we move on. So we've just stitched the first row together and we've got six patches sewn together. So I'm just going to show you how to press that seam so it sits in the right direction. So as we stitch the quilt together, we're going to take each row is going to be pressed in one direction. So we're going to alternate pressing directions. The top row will be pressed in from right to left and the next row, the alternate row, will be pressed from left to right. And we do this so that the seams nestle together and we'll talk about that in a moment. But to begin with, let's just look at pressing. So in patchwork we press, we don't iron. So to press, we're going first of all we're going to set the seam. So we're going to use the iron. My iron's currently set with a little bit of steam. You can choose whether to use steam or not. Um, Emma and myself have don't tend to use steam, steam that much um, for the reason being that the, um, the cotton can shrink a little bit during the pressing process but whatever you do just keep it consistent all the way through the, the making of the quilt. 
Now all I've done there is I've set the seam, so I've allowed some heat to get into the seam. It relaxes the cotton fibres and it relaxes the thread that's going into the cotton patch and it just settles everything down. Now I'm ready to actually press the seam in the direction that I want it to go. So first of all I'm going to turn it to the right side and I want all of my seams to go in this direction. So I'm going to use my fingers to, man to manipulate the fabric, the seam of the fabric underneath and then I'm going to what's called finger press. So I'm just going to finger press that seam in the direction that I want it to go and I want it to go from right to left. So again pressing that in the direction I want it to go then I'm going to take the iron and I'm going to set it on that seam. So I'm not going to iron with a, a, a forward and backwards motion, I'm just going to set the iron on the seam and then let the heat from the iron and the weight of the iron do the job of flattening that seam and that's exactly what I want. So now all of those seams have been pressed on the top row in one direction and we're ready to continue to do the rest of the quilt. So taking one row at a time you're going to continue to make all seven rows and then we're going to join those seven rows together in the next stage. Once you've got all of your squares sewn into rows together and nice and neatly pressed, we're going to start joining them together to form the panel. So take two of your rows and you're going to flip them over so that they're now right sides together. This is where you're going to need to use some pins. You're going to take each section in turn and if you look at this carefully you can see that we've got a seam going in one direction and a seam going in the opposite way. And those two seams are going to butt up against each other so that we get a nice intersection. You'll be able to feel it with your finger and your thumb either side of the seams. Take your pin and just pop it in to the fabric to hold it in place like so. And then work your way along the row doing exactly the same with each of those joining points. Pin and just nestle them in so that they're nice and neat and together. Now if you can't feel it with your finger and your thumb you can just open it out like that and you can see that those two fabrics are going to meet together really really nicely there. Pin and then the last one Now if you like you can also pop a pin right at the beginning but you don't you don't really need to. And we're going to take this to the machine and we're then going to sew a quarter of an inch seam all the way along. Remembering to take your pins out as you go along so that you don't run over them with your needle. And then hopefully when you open it out, you should have nicely matching intersection points on each of your squares. And you're going to continue with that till you've got all of your panel together. Once you've got your panel all sewn together, you can press these seams. I pressed all of mine going in one direction. You could, if you wanted to, press those seams open to alleviate some of the bulk a little bit at these joins but normally I just press all in one direction. And there's our completed panel. See, that was quick, easy? I think it was, wasn't it really? So now we've got the panel all put together and all pressed, we're now going to look at putting some borders all the way around it. We've got the completed 
panel, that's all made up now. And we're going to add some borders to the quilt. So the borders do a couple of things. The borders are nice because it makes the quilt a little bit bigger. But the borders do something special as well because they help keep the body of the quilt. This is called the body of the quilt. They help keep it all nice and square. So we've pre-cut our fabric strips. These strips for the borders have been cut at three and a half inches wide. And the top and the bottom have been cut at 27 and a half inches. And that's what your quilt should measure. So you're going to measure across the top. And in this case, it's 27 and a half inches. So that's what we cut the border to. And we're going to cut the bottom, top and the bottom exactly the same size, 27 and a half inches. If your quilt doesn't measure 27 and a half inches across the top and the bottom, don't worry about it. Cut it to the size that the top and the bottom measure. So if they're out by half an inch, you can cut your border to 28 inches. If it's a little bit shorter, then cut it to that size as well. That's fine, just make sure that the top and the bottom border measure exactly the same width. You want them to be exactly the same width. In this case, 27 and a half inches. And we're going to apply those borders to the quilt first. So we're going to sew these on first and then we're going to come back and we'll talk about the outside borders, get the run down the vertical side of the quilt in a moment. So I'm just going to attach the first border along the top here. So I'm going to take it down off my wall. And this is my centre point between my blocks. So I'm just going to fold my border fabric in half and I'm just going to give it a quick finger press like that to find the centre of it. And I'm going to place that down right sides together with my panel and I'm going to Put a pin in the centre point, one in the end and one in the other end, like so. And then I might just pop a couple of other pins in there just, just to keep it in place while I sew it. And I'm now going to sew that with a quarter of an inch seam all the way along. And that's my first border put on. So I'm going to take that to the iron now and I'm going to give that a press. I'm going to heat set it first like we did previously and I'm going to press it so that my seams are going away from my fabric into my border fabric. And then I'm going to repeat the process and pop the bottom border on as well. Okay, so we've got the top and the bottom borders on, all pressed, nice and neat. So now we need to look at putting on our side borders. So it should measure 38 inches. So let's just have a quick check. Uh, measure both sides, just to make sure. It does. Okay, so I'm going to take these strips back to my cutting board and I'm going to cut them at 38 inches. And then I'm going to repeat, repeat that process by folding this in half, folding these in half and matching the centers pinning it on and then sewing it using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so here she is. That's your first quilt top all made up and ready to be quilted. So at this stage the patchwork top's all been pieced but it's not actually a quilt yet until it's got some backing fabric and then something in the middle to form what's called a quilt sandwich. So what we're going to do next we're going to add a backing fabric and this is the one we've chosen for the quilt today. So we've got a piece of fabric it's about a metre uh, wide, it's enough to cover this quilt and a little bit extra. You need at least two to three inches on both sides of your quilt for the backing fabric in width. The same on the length as well. As well. So that's our backing fabric. And then the bit that goes to form the quilt sandwich, the bit in the middle with the two layers, is you know, that the meat of a sandwich. This is called batting or wadding. It means the same thing. This is a piece of 80-20, that's 80% 
cotton and 20% polyester, but you can use whatever you like in terms of wadding or batting. It can be 100% poly, it can be 80-20 cotton like this is, 100% cotton or even wool. The choice is yours, there's plenty to choose from out there. So choose something that you think you like and like the feel of. So we're going to layer up the quilt now. We're going to layer it up so that we've got a backing fabric, then the, the quilt wadding, and then the quilt top will go on the top. We'll, so we'll get that started and then we'll show you that stage. Okay, so here I am, I'm on my knees on the floor and I'm here because I'm going to base the quilt together. That means we're going to connect the backing fabric to the wadding and the quilt top. Now I'm on the floor because most of you will do this process at home on the floor, I think, unless you've got a very large table or another surface that you can use to actually do this process. And if you do, I do suggest you use it because it will save your back and it will save your knees. But in the meantime, we're on the floor. That's why I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you how to put this quilt together. So let's pan down and take a look at what we've got. So first of all, we've got the backing fabric. This is the backing fabric. And we're going to put the pretty side of the backing fabric against the floor or your table surface. This is the wadding or the batting. It's the same thing. It's that quilt sandwich, the bit that goes in the middle. And we're going to put that against the backing fabric. And then we're going to layer up the quilt top over the top. And we're going to try, and we've arranged our quilt top so that we've made good use of the fabric. We've got a strip at the end, and that means we can use that backing fabric for something else. But you want to leave two to three inches all the way around your quilt top. You want enough batting and enough backing fabric around the outside of the quilt. And you need that so you can hang on to something when you do the next bit of the process, which is to sew the quilt to the batting and the backing. Now you can sew it together by machine or you can sew it together by hand, or you can even do something called tying. But we're going to show you how to machine quilt. Before we can do that, we need to temporarily connect these three layers together. At the moment, they're all separate. We just need to make sure that they're connected together and don't shift during the machine quilting process. So there's a couple of ways you can do that. You can use safety pins, and safety pins are a great way of doing the basting process. This is basting, and you're literally just going to connect all three layers with the safety pin and ideally go at least one every square. Don't go too mad, but you need enough to hold everything together. That's one way that you can, you can connect your quilt top to your quilt backing and batting. You could hand sew with a tacking thread all the way through and do some temporary tacking stitches. That would be another way you could do it. Or a very modern way of doing it is to use something called 505 temporary adhesive and that's a glue spray. It's a great um, product to use if you want to quickly um, attach th um, fabrics together. It is temporary and it does wash out so don't worry about that. And I'm going to show you how to, to do that now. Okay, first of all, we're going to work, we're going to fold everything in half and we're going to work half of the quilt at a time. And I'm going to smooth out my backing fabric. If you want, you can actually put some masking tape to hold this fabric in place, but you don't need to do that. You're going to give your 505 a really good shake. You want to shake it enough until the can feels cold. And that means that all of the product inside is well mixed. And then you're just going to do a very light spray over the surface of the quilt. You don't need much, you just need enough to hold the three layers together. So very light spraying. And then we're going to take the batting and then we're going to put that over and onto the backing fabric. And then we're just going to use the hands to smooth that out. Then we're going to do the same for the quilt top. So again, a light spray, just enough to hold it in place. You don't need too much. 
take that across and then just use your hands. Try not to stretch anything at this point, just very gently move everything and line it all up nice. So make sure your corners are nice and square. And try and make your lines as straight as possible. Try and avoid any, any wiggly lines, you don't want that. Then we're going to do the same on the other side. So we're going to fold the other half back. We're going to repeat the process. So a light spraying on the back of the on the backing fabric. We're going to put the batting onto that and smooth that down. And then we're going to do the same with the quilt top. So the light spraying on the back on the backing. And then we're going to smooth the quilt top on top of the, the batting. And then we're going to go through, we're going to check to make sure everything's looking nice and we want 90 degree corners here, make that nice and neat and square. And check, check that everything's lining up with a nice straight line. Just spend a little time making sure everything's looking as good as you can get it because we're going to quilt it next and once we put stitches in, it's going to be in whatever position you've actually laid it out. But it is all right now, it's all connected and we can take that to the, um, the sewing machine and now we can actually do some machine quilting. Right, so we're now ready to actually machine quilt this lovely little quilt top. So how are we going to do that? Well, lots and lots of ways we could machine quilt it, but we're going to show you one of the simplest ways of doing it. All you need to do at this point is get the three layers connected with some permanent stitching. So one of the easiest ways to do it would be to lay a ruler from diagonal to diagonal and then mark that diagonal with a marking tool of your choice. Now that could be something as simple as a blue marking pen that you can get, or you can get something called a hero marker, that helps as well. And there are plenty of tutorials that you can take and look at those later on. Alternatively, another way would be to use tape, and this is just blue um, painter's tape, and you can actually mark um, a line, put a piece of tape against your ruler, and then when you take the ruler away, you can actually stitch alongside that blue tape. That's a really easy way to do it and you've got no markings to take out after you've quilted the quilt. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to put a series of lines diagonally through the quilt in just one direction and then we're going to machine quilt it. But you can quilt it however you would like to. So I'm going to mark up just three or four pieces of tape at a time and then I'm going to reuse the tape so I'm not wasting too much of this um, painter's tape. I've lined the ruler up from corner to corner of one of the patches and then I'm just going to lay the tape at the side of it to make sure that it's, it's nice and straight. And I know that I've done that for these other two pieces down here and then I'm just going to quilt alongside that, that blue painter's tape. And then when I've quilted I've got one, two, three, four lines that I can quilt, then I'll take these pieces of tape off and then reuse them further down the quilt. So now we're going to look at quilting our quilt top. And to do that, we're going to use our machine and we're going to use one of these fancy gizmos here. This is called a walking foot, also called a, an even feed foot. And most machines will come with one of these now. If you haven't got one, then do contact your, your local um, machine department because they will probably be able to source one for you. And this little contraption will make sure that it feeds through all of your layers at an even rate so that when you do your quilting, you won't end up with any pleats or puckers at the back of your work, which we don't want. So one of these, they can be a little fiddly to pop on the machine, but once you get the hang of them, they work really, really well. You can, of course, if you wanted to, hand quilt your, your quilt top, that's completely up to you. But for speed, one of these things will, will certainly help. So I've got my walking foot onto my machine, 
and I've got my quilt laid out by the side of me. Now it is important at this stage that you support the weight of the quilt as you're quilting. What you don't want is for it to be hanging down over the table and dragging because that will affect the quality of your stitches. Um, the other thing that you might like to do is to, my handy assistant, um, wear a pair of machining gloves. So these are cotton gloves that have little sort of um, rubber tips to them really with, that help you to grip the fabric as you're feeding it through. And my handy assistant is now trying to find the other hand for me. <laughs> Any minute now, incoming. There we go. <laughs> so these really do help actually. I have, I have trouble with my hands very, very often. So these do really ease the, the situation for you. So gloves, make sure you've supported the weight of your quilt while you're working. And I've got it just under the machine. So I'm just gonna lower the foot and I'm going to start stitching. Now, it is called a walking foot, so you don't want to, if you can, you don't want to go too fast with it. Oh, my thread's all caught up there. So um, let the machine and the foot do its work and let's see how we get on. So I'm starting off the edge of the quilt and I'm just gonna start stitching along the edge of the tape. first row done. Now the one thing you might want to think about is, is to try not to stitch through your tape as you're going um, because sometimes it can make an awful mess on your quilt. Not on your quilt but it sort of gums up a little bit. But So that's one row done and then just move along to the next one. Lower the foot and off we go. doing that all the way across the quilt, moving this tape as I go and reusing it. Right, so here she is, she's all quilted. So Emma and I split the quilting, so it uh, looks quite nice actually splitting it, I enjoy doing that, <laughs> it was good. So we did it quite simply, we kept it simple just so that um, the quilt was quilted as quickly as possible in a nice, a nice way. We've got a nice effect, we've got diagonal lines going through and it's lovely and soft, the quilt's got a nice hand to it so it was lovely. So we need to finish the quilt's edges off now so all the quilting is done but we've got all this excess fabric around the outside that needs to be trimmed away. So we're going to take it to the cutting table and we're going to trim all this excess backing and batting fabric off and then we're going to put something called binding around the quilt to finish those raw edges. So we're going to show you how to do that next. So we've trimmed our backing and the batting away, the excess materials away from the outside of the quilt and it's looking lovely, it's looking, feeling really soft and cuddly and it's really really nice, really happy with this. Um, we took the, the quilt to the cutting surface and we used a rotary cutter and a rotary ruler to actually trim the excess materials away. If you don't want to do that you can use scissors. Um, but whichever method you use, don't cut away from the actual quilt itself. So keep as much of the quilt there as you can. So all we need to do now is we need to enclose those raw edges. So we need to make sure they're all ni nicely finished. And we're going to bind those edges now with some binding strips. So let's take a look at that. And here they come. Here come the strips. Yes. Thank you, Emma. <laughs> so what we've got here, we chose this lovely lemon colour to go around the outside of the quilt and we have cut four strips of fabric, one for each side of the quilt and they're all measuring two and a half inches wide and they're the full width of the fabric so in this case about 42 inches long and we're going to show you a method of binding which is a simple method. 
There are lots and lots of ways to bind a quilt, but we want you to have success with this quilt. We want you to want to make it as easy as possible for you. So we've chosen this method, which is simply a method of we're going to attach each strip of fabric to the, um, the sides of the quilt and then we're going to finish at the corner. We're not going to worry about turning around a corner at this stage, we're just going to butt end the binding. So I'm going to show you how to do that next. So we took our binding strips to the ironing board and we've given them a quick press and what we've done is we've folded them in half so that the raw edges meet up along this side and we've got the nice pretty side face out this time. And we're just gonna attach that now to our quilt top. I'm gonna to start on the top section and what I've done is I've worked out what my seam allowance is going to be. You, would, you need your seam allowance to be about quarter of an inch to three eighths of an inch, depending on your machine. Um, both Tracy and I like our, our bindings to be quite full when it folds over, which we'll show you in just a moment. Um, so we both tend to use about three eighths, three eighths of a seam allowance when attaching them. So I'm just going to pop this on. Now you can pin this if you like as you're going along, that's completely up to you, but just remember to take the pins out as you're going along. And I'm just matching up the raw edges of my binding with the raw edges of my quilt top. You may also notice that I've left the walking foot on at this point because this will help with all the layers going through. So if I take that out and just show you, we're going to fold this over and roll this so it goes over to the back and we'll cover all of those raw edges and also that stitching that I've just done. So you can see that from the front, it's a lovely, nice, even, full binding. So now I've popped that onto there, I'm gonna pop another of the strips onto the other end at the same time. So that's top and bottom done now, and I can just use my scissors to trim off the excess that I've got at each end. And now I'm going to look at putting on the sides. So to do this, I'm just going to move this away from the quilt top like so. And I'm then going to pop my next one and I'm just gonna snip off that salvage edge just there. But I'm now going to put my next one so that the raw edges are level with the first binding that I've popped on and they're level with the sides of the quilt just here. And I'm now going to start sewing again all the way down this edge. And when I get to the opposite end, I will open the other binding up and do exactly the same. And that's my sides put, put on and it will fold out like that. And I'm just gonna trim off that excess on that corner as well. And I'm going to do the other side and then we'll just give you a quick talk on how you're then going to turn that over and stitch it down to the wrong side of your quilt top. We've attached the binding now to the top, the bottom and to both sides. And there's just one last job to do before you finish your quilt. You're going to sit down in front of the fire, in front of perhaps an old film or something like that. And you're going to hand stitch this binding into place. You're going to start by folding this folded edge over to the back of the quilt, like so. Some little clips or some pins will help and you're going to pin that in place and you're going to start from this corner and you're just going to catch this hem 
into the backing of your quilt top. When you go all the way around and come back to this corner, we've got this raw edge here that's tucked inside and you're then just gonna fold that over, tuck everything in and you will stitch all the way along by hand to encase all that inside your binding. And then from the front, you should have a nice neat binding on your quilt top. Right, so here it is, your first quilt. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> it didn't take long, did it? It does a nice, quick, simple quilt. So don't panic over your first quilt, just enjoy the process of making it. So if you, you're going to, it's, been, it's a learning curve, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely, and if it's so, not perfect, don't worry about, don't worry about, about it. it. Try move again. on, yeah, move on, it. have another that's go. It. Yeah, whoever you give this to is going to love it, and if you keep it for yourself, all the better. <laughs> And you've learned some really good skills today. We've talked about some rotary cutting. We've talked about quarter inch seam allowance, mm -hmm. piecing your squares together, pressing, layering up, binding, quilting. quilting. There's been a there's, lot to take there's in. There's so much, so many steps to make a quilt. So if you've got this far, you've really, really done well done. Well done, well done. Fantastic. Thank you very much for following this video. We do and hope you've enjoyed it. We do, and, and, uh, and thank you to Love Crafts as yeah. well for letting us do it. Yeah. Been great fun. Signing off and all the best for now. Take care. Bye. Bye.